sejam bem-vindos a mais uma edição do Green TI, esse projeto do setor de tecnologia de Minas Gerais, através do Sindinfo, Sindicato da Indústria de Tecnologia e Software, com parceiros fundamentais como o governo americano, o governo inglês, o SEBRAE Nacional e todos os nossos patrocinadores e apoio da Federação das Indústrias de Minas Gerais. Hoje nós estamos aqui com um convidado incrível, parceiro do Reino Unido, o Sr. Robert Pell. E eu vou fazer a introdução dele em português e continuar em inglês, por ser a língua nativa, o Sr. Pell não, não fala português. Mas é um PHD, geologista, CEO e founder da Minviro, que é uma grande empresa de software e tecnologia do Reino Unido, que trabalha com materiais pesados e a gestão para a transformação deles para a economia do baixo carbono. So, welcome, Mr. Pell. Thank you so much to uh, join us in this great project. In this great year, 2021, will be the year where sustainability will be the most important subject. We know that we will have COP, United Nations meeting, at the end of the year in Scotland and the UK government are uh, joining the world in these conversations. We have a, a, a new fact with Biden government uh, coming back to the Paris Agreement and you work in all the Europe with the Europe rules about uh, environmental rules and you are an uh, uh, expert as a PhD and geologist and entrepreneur in various subjects related to sustainability and related to low carbon economy. So uh, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself and please uh, talk, with us, uh, talk with us about your perception of the year of the business, uh, the place of the technology and software in this business sustainability. Great. Yeah, thank you so much for the introduction. Yeah, so um, yeah, my, as has been described, my name is Robert Pell, um, founder and director of Minviro. Um, my background's initially as a geologist and uh, then worked in the mining industry as a mining journalist for several years and then completed a PhD, which was really focused on, on technology to try and support the mining and metal sector uh, with sustainability goals, really. So quantifying environmental impacts and, and trying to mitigate those impacts as well. So 2021 really is um, a, a very important year and it seems like a, a milestone in, in sustainability importance. Um, it's very important for the UK as well, hosting uh, the, the COP meeting, which is very important. Um, but I think more broadly in the industry, you know, sustainability is has moved from a nice to have to a need to have. Um, we're seeing incredible amounts of ESG investment moving into, into the mining space and We, we see a lot of mining and metal projects which can boast you know really positive environmental credentials from from getting advantages from that fact um, you know one thing that I think we we see is that a lot of the the same sustainability areas within the mining and metal space are are burgeoning they're just starting and so There's lots of different methodologies for calculating impact. There's lots of different technologies which are sprouting up. Um, and we're one of those technologies. Um, you know, so I think over, over the coming years, we're going to see uh, you know, a lot more technology being developed and probably a more formalized framework for calculating the impacts of, of the products from the mining and metal sector, um, you know, and, and that feeding into the downstream uses as well. So. Um, within, you know, we're based in London, in, in the UK, um, you know, but we work with projects all around the world, including uh, including a number of projects in Brazil and, and uh, Latin and South America. Um, and, you know, we we see um, this life cycle assessment approach, is, which is the method for quantifying impacts that we use as, as being more and more important um, as a tool to communicate impact across the value chain. So, you know, when a when a mining company wants to sell a product that they have, whether it's a, a kilogram of, of copper cathode or or a you know a metal like a technology metal like rare earth elements, um, you know, they need to be able to communicate what the impact is for that product to the user of that product. 
And that's where life cycle assessment comes in. So it's that sort of language that allows that for communication. Um, and and with the with the EU, we've we've seen it was in late 2020 that they released some proposed um, frameworks for what the policy will be with regards to regulations for um, battery impact calculations. So they, they released a load of regulations, which is suggesting that there should be increased recycled content in batteries, um, but also there should be uh, an indication of the carbon footprint of a battery. Um, and that's going to be implemented, it's suggested that it's going to be implemented in 2024. And then obviously the, the, stat, the requirements are going to increase and increase after that. Um, so, you know, what, where we fit into this picture is we work, we, we're both a consultancy company and a technology company, and um, we support mining companies in understanding where their impacts and their projects are by conducting these life cycle assessments, identifying the environmental hotspots. So, for example, at a mine site, is it the consumption of diesel or is it the, the explosive consumption or is it direct emissions that's causing the, the climate change impact? And we go right through the value chain. So, you know, in the mineral processing and even refining stages, we can identify exactly where the hotspots and advise on how they might mitigate those impacts. Um, so that's where we're sort of working at the moment. Mr. Bell, uh, when, when I, I, 20 years ago, I remember that the low carbon economy and the bonds are certified uh, uh, documents to try to monetize the efficiency in, in the private sector. And then I remembered uh, Obama government in 2012 to 2016, trying to enhance and, and bring new rules to this market. And when, when, you, you, when, when I heard you saying about the transversality, about uh, this, this uh, life cycle uh, measures, because you are not on, only in the mining sector or, or, or raw materials, but uh, everything about life cycle uh, materials. And we are, we are uh, hearing a lot regarding to electric cars and mobility, as you, you, you said, but uh, I, I know that in UK, the valuation of companies, it's, it's uh, related to the, the compliance, uh, environmental governance. So you have market rules that change the valuation. So I believe that's one of the reasons that your company is uh, 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 important in, in this segment to try to, to offer this kind of indicators. And I would like to... to to ask you something about the market of low carbon uh, certificates and how do you believe in emerging markets like Brazil, the paradigm or the sense of importance of low carbon economy and the uh, sustainability uh, economy or sustainability rules about private companies are, uh, are doing in, in the sense of the paradigm of Union Europe? Yeah, so um, that's a great question. So, you know, we, we as I mentioned before, we work with uh, companies in, in Brazil. Um, and there's, there's, you know, depending on the companies we work here with, they have loads of different motivations for why they would want to, to conduct this life cycle assessment. You know, one, one situation might be that uh, a Brazilian operator might want to export their products into a European market. And those European markets are going to have their own, you know, requirements, regulations. And when I say European market, that's, you know, that's very broad, but even every single purchaser um, will have their own requirements. So, you know, imagine a, an OEM or a car manufacturer, they, they have the ultimate goal of having the lowest impact car on the road that they can. And, you know, as we've moved to electrified vehicles, say even in your European market, if that material going into that vehicle is, is procured from Brazil, you know, they need to know exactly what the impact of that material is to put into their models themselves. Um, I don't know if that answered your question. One, one other thing that I'd probably say is that, uh, you know, there's a lot, as I said, you know, the sustainability sort of metrics space and ESG metrics generally is has been a, it's an emergent sector and it's, it's developed very quickly over you know a relatively short period of time where it's really exploded and so there's 
there's a whole array of different calculation methodologies, different types of assessments. Um, you know, one thing that Moonviro is very, very uh, strident on is the fact that, you know, greenwashing is not acceptable. Any environmental claims need to be backed up by robust studies and, and robust methodologies. Um, so I think uh, there's real opportunities for companies um, in, in Brazil and, and elsewhere to, to conduct really good life cycle assessment studies or really good environmental performance studies that can encourage or enhance their opportunities to sell to European markets or, or other markets um, in, in other places in the world, but also internally as well. So, you know, if you want to develop the, the downstream infrastructure in Brazil itself, you know, and then you want to maybe sell a more advanced, you know, a, a car back to Europe, you need to know the impact of the products going into that, that manufacturing sector. Okay. Could you, could you talk uh, a little bit about the ESG rules or methodology or guidelines? Uh, how, how does it uh, is improving in, in European Union and around the world? Yeah, so, I mean, Minvara isn't uh, an ESG company. We, we are very specific on the E. So, you know, we, our role is to, to quantify the environmental impact of, of producing a product. Um, you know, our data can fit into broader ESG frameworks. And I know that there's a lot of, um, as I mentioned, I, there's a lot of... I, yeah, I would like to, 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 I'm sorry, to, to ask you to clarify what does it means ESG? Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, environmental, social and governance. And um, so, you know, we wouldn't claim to be, you know, there are companies that create these scoreboards for ESG performance for different companies um, and some, you know, some do great jobs. You know, we don't claim to be a full ESG company. We are very, you know, our team is full of engineers, uh, you know, mining, mineral processes, and chemical engineers and technology uh, producers as well. Like we create tool, software tools for companies. So we're really, we're zoomed in on the E, making sure that companies know how to quantify and mitigate the environmental impacts so they can improve that E score on the ESG scoreboard. Um, and I can, I can maybe give like, as I said, I'm not an expert on the full ESG methodology for every impact category, but I, I know that um, there are, there's a, one of the criticisms that's leveled at ESG is that there's different methodologies and, you know, one company might score very differently from one ESG scorecard provider from a, from another. Um, so yeah, there are some challenges of that. And my view, you know, this is again a personal view that I think that we'll see a sort of harmonization of that in the coming years. Thank you. Uh, how, how do you see the new entrance of the Biden American government in this uh, sustainability agenda uh, and how do you believe it will impact the Brazilian companies in the new paradigm that will be established? Yeah, I mean, um, I think the uh, I think the Biden administration is pretty clear in its objectives. It's it's very um, you know forward looking and positive and and uh, yeah boisterous about the the adoption and the transition to a low carbon economy. Um, you know, that looks very positive for Brazil and, and many other uh, countries that can produce the materials that are going to need, be needed for this, this low carbon transition. You know, just more broadly, putting it in, you know, even, even before the Biden administration came in, there were still some uh, really, you know, incredible um, forecasts about the demand for some of these technology and critical metals going forward. So um, I think even from, from last year, World Bank, uh, released, I think it was the World Bank released a report um, showing that demand for, say, I think it was lithium, graphite, and nickel was going to increase by around 500% by 2050. Um, so I think, you know, the Biden administration just enhances that demand growth and demand requirement. And obviously, Brazil is, you know, blessed to be uh, at, endowed with a lot of resources um, that could be utilized and uh, generate value for, for the country. And at the end of the, the last line, I would like to, uh, to hear your perception about the NGOs and other interests be between uh, country competitions that maybe could impact some uh, international rule regarding to, to 
how can I say, not to balance the, the difference uh, about competitivity. And uh, sometimes it seems to be uh, a little bit uh, scary for some companies to, 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 to have to deal with this kind of uh, uh, politically correct uh, uh, situation. I mean, I believe that in UK, you have a lot of uh, rules and this, this, the, the level of maturity of the society about this discussion is a little bit high. Uh, in Brazil, unfortunately, uh, is still uh, a little bit polarized in, in political perspective. So I'd like to hear you, how, how can we uh, balance these things to spread the perception, a good perception of the sustainability to the whole society? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a question that, um, you know, it's, it's repeated and echoed in, I think, every, every location that I've been. There's, there's challenges, I mean, in, in the UK, in Europe, you know, it's, it might be described as the license to operate. Um, and then more broadly, it's, it's, it's getting engagement from, from the broader community, broader stakeholders and people in general to understand, you know, how mining and raw materials fit into these into the society more generally. Like, um, I, I, I completely understand that it's a, it's a very challenging issue to, to communicate to, to everybody, you know, why we need mines, why we need raw materials, um, you know, what, what are the alternatives? So I know that there's been a lot of work from uh, colleagues from like my previous, well, the university uh, where I did my PhD, that they've uh, worked on, on project which is trying to look at community engagement stakeholder engagement trying to understand um you know why you have these polarized opinions on on these matters understand how you how you have a dialogue with everyone you know because at the end of the day sometimes sometimes concerns are founded to somewhat some some degree sometimes they're not but you know you need to have a dialogue uh, to be able to sort of to sort of do this and I, you know I, I, there's no easy answer i think to try and uh, turn a community to um, pro mining or, or you know away from specific issues it's very challenging and it's also it's not a, there's not one solution that solves everything you know different you know even different countries have different cultures and even different parts of different countries have different cult cultures and you know different dialogue uh, dialogues and different methods need to be you know uh, carried out to make sure that you know you understand what people's worries and concerns are and, and how you might mitigate that thank you I have two last uh, questions. How do you uh, see the, the level of excellence uh, of some great companies here in Brazil to deal with uh, sustainability and measure the, the low carbon, uh, the life cycle process? And how the new technologies like uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, are impacting your businesses? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'll start with, so my first engagement uh, with the Brazilian mining community was actually through uh, Mining Hub. And um, I think that as a, as a concept is, is fantastic. So you've got, you know, multiple mining companies and stakeholders engaged together to try and solve some of the biggest challenges that exist. Um, so I think that's you know that, that shows a real motivation to solve some of these challenges and the fact that there's you know there's always certain projects which focus on sustainability that's great. Um, I think there's always room for improvement. You know, as you know, there's no no mine in the world is is optimized 100% for sustainability, um, but it's always a journey. And I think you know Brazilian companies are there's diversity both in you know, scale and experience and knowledge in the space of sustainability. And now I'll move a bit onto the how sort of this data analytics and um, machine learning and all this kind of stuff feeds in to technology. It's, it's becoming more and more important. So, you know, our, our technology solutions, you know, you've got uh, inputs from, from, you know, mining operations, you know, that might be material and energy inputs, but also direct emissions from site and everything. Um, you know, as you, as you generate more and more data um, and you can put it into your models, you can forecast more accurately what you're likely to achieve in the future. 
and you can you can move the you know the buttons and 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 basically optimize your your projects to minimize those impacts so we, we've done quite a lot on this in terms of what we call temporally explicit life cycle assessment so understanding what the impact of the project is going to look like over the the full life of the project you know understanding that changes in grade and changes in penalty elements and and changes in deposit type and you know all sorts of infrastructure changes as well will influence the say the climate change impact of, of a project um, so yeah that I mean that data is absolutely fundamental to to everything sustainability because without data you don't know if you're improving so um, yeah I'd say that's that's very important thank you very much mr. Bell uh, I'm glad you mentioned the uh, mining hub because my background is completely related to the startup ecosystem and we have a lot of great uh, startup companies here in, in Brazil and in Minas Gerais especially so thank you so much to share your knowledge to share your experience we 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 have a uh, we had a great moment with uh, receiving your vision and knowing about what are you doing there and we will we'll glad we'll be glad to 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 join you and your company in, in new webinars in new events uh, during this year thank you so much to to join us in this project Brilliant. thank you very much <laughs>